Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Akari Warriors, or simply known in Japan as Akari, which translates to Fury. Akari Warriors is a vertical run and gun shooter that was developed by SNK and published by Trade West in 1986. If you're a kid in the 80s, then Akari Warriors was the game. It was real cool, and it was real popular too. There was always a debate as to what was the better game at the time, Commando or Akari Warriors, because they were both vertical scrolling shooters with a similar theme. Personally, I would have to go with Akari Warriors because I just thought it was the better game. Just slightly though, because Commando is a good game too. Now. The prevailing theory behind the game is that in a never-ending feud with Capcom that appears to step back to the 80s, it seems that the inception of Icarry Warriors may have been in response to Capcom's Commando that was released a few months earlier. Even Commando's director, Tokuro Fujiwara, later regretted not releasing a follow-up soon enough allowing SNK to capitalize on the situation, but the motivation of the game may not have been in response to anything Capcom was doing at the time. I mean, you know, it may have partially been, but I think they were more motivated by the movie Rambo, but I'll get to that later. Let me just first address the story. Depending on what region you're in, there's like two different stories. If you're playing the North American version, the story goes as follows. Basically, you and your friend have to go in and rescue Colonel Cook, a reference to Leland Cook, co-founder of Trade West, from an enemy force located in a small village named Ikari in Southeast Asia. If you're playing the Japanese version, you and our friend have to infiltrate enemy territory to rescue General Kawasaki, a reference to Akichi Kawasaki, one of the founders of SNK, from a bunch of neo-Nazis. Whichever the case may be, you still have to fight through an onslaught of enemies through six stages of mayhem. You start off with a limited amount of bullets and grenades, but you can replenish them by grabbing power-ups from downed enemies. Other power-ups can also increase the range and strength of your gun, increase the blast of your grenades, and kill all on-screen enemies. Additionally, you can commandeer a tank which can take enemy gunfire and kill hordes of enemies with its blast. However, you have to pay attention to the fuel gauge located at the right of the screen because when you run out of fuel, naturally you'll stop, but you have to quickly eject from the vehicle before it blows up. Now, the original arcade cabinet had a pretty unique joystick. You see, the game's joystick could be rotated to change the direction the character faced, which was pretty cool because you had the freedom to walk or attack in different directions. It was a little bit more intuitive than the rotating fire button Capcom used in Forgotten Worlds, which took a little getting used to. Now, the thing about the controls is that it makes playing like Carry Warriors particularly frustrating on emulators because of the rotating controls. I mean, I know there's people who totally figured out a system around it, but your best bet is to play a home part of the game on some arcade archives or anniversary collection. Usually I would say, you know, look for the arcade cabinet, but similar to Forgotten Worlds, good luck on finding a working one. Cabinets with specialty rotating controls are often broken or out of order. Now the thing with their names is that in the original arcade game, I'm talking strictly arcade game here now. In the original arcade game, arcade instruction manual or bezels, they were never referred to by any names. I even checked the whole Japanese game, Japanese arcade flies, and and arcade manuals. The naming of the characters came a few months later for home parts of the game, and there could be a sort of explanation for this. You see, Keiko Iju, who is one of the designers of Icarry Warriors, the game was supposed to be originally based on Rambo First Blood Part 2. In Japan, the title of the movie was slightly changed to Rambo to The Furious Escape, hence the title Fury. The game's director, Koji Obata, further emphasized in an interview that they couldn't secure the rights, so they settled on just titling the game Akari, which would mean that the original intended name for the main character of the game would have been none other than John Rambo. I think by not specifically naming the characters gave SNK the leeway to make any necessary changes if they had secured the rights to Rambo. Since this never happened and the controls and gameplay were very similar to TNK3, known simply as Tank in Japan, it naturally became a spiritual prequel to Akari Warriors. And who was the main character of the game as clearly stated in the Japanese flyer? You guessed it. Colonel Ralph, full name Ralph Jones, also known as Paul and I Carry Warriors. The funny thing is, is that later on Stallone did manage to get in contact with SNK to give him the okay, but the game had already debuted overseas and became pretty popular by that time. So it was just too late to change the name of the game. Ralph and Clark, the names of the characters in the Japanese version and what they're better known as, became more commonplace after they went on to become regulars in the King of Fighters series as well as Metal Slug 6 and 7. Akari Warriors 
Gears has been ported over to the PC, Commodore 16, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, the Amiga, Atari ST, the MSX, the NES, the Atari 7800, and the Atari 2600. The game is included on the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection for the Switch and the PS4. The game also spawned two sequels, Victory Road and I Carry 3, The Rescue. The sequels didn't do as well as the original game. However, because of the character's frequent appearances in the popular Metal Slug and King of Fighters series, there's always a continued renewed interest in the original Carry Warriors, and as well as should be, because the game is cool, the difficulty is pretty balanced, and it doesn't feel repetitive. So, if you have the opportunity to play the original arcade cabinet, grab your guns and grenades and take full advantage of it because, as I stated earlier, games with rotary knobs and controls are usually out of order, and let me know what you think.